What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to CLEO's Network. Battle Styles is coming out on March 19th. So today I'm going over all of the new decks that are coming out of this set, whether they are going to be good, bad, somewhere in between. And if I miss anything, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. But I have tried to make this list as all inclusive as possible. So today we're going to be talking about all of these decks that are coming out of Battle Styles. Uh, so we've got Blastoise VMAX, Bronzong Variants, Charim Variants, Durant, Galarian Mr. Rhyme and Yamper, Kingdra, Primeape, Salazzle Weepin Bell, Tapu Koko VMAX Variants, Single Strike Urshifu VMAX, Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX Variants, Venusaur VMAX, and Victini VMAX. I have lists for all of these provided and will be briefly touching on everything you see here on the screen. I will be rating all of the decks that I show based on what I think their potential is. So for high potential, it means I expect the deck to be present in tournaments and have success. It will likely be a tier two or tier one deck by my estimations. Mid potential will mean that the deck makes sense, but might be outclassed by other variants of the archetype, or it has qualities which are underwhelming or easily countered. These decks will likely be tier tier 2 or tier 3, or possibly a rogue deck that doesn't get much play. And then low potential, a deck that I evaluate as marginally weaker than everything else, it's likely tier 3 rogue or just not very good. Um, so without, I, I don't know which decks are going to be, you know, top 3 deck, which one's going to win tournaments, this one's not actually going to be good. But with the high potential, mid potential, low potential rating system, I can give you guys kind of a general... Uh, estimation on how good the deck might be whether you should invest in the cards on ptcgo if it's between this deck and another uh kind of where i'm seeing these decks end up but none of this is set in stone of course the set hasn't even come out yet and before we get into the bulk of this video i'd like to shout out my sponsor potownstore.com the best place for you to get ptcgo codes be sure to use code celio for five percent off these are some of the sources that I'd like to credit for the deck lists that I am showing off today. HowHowNews.com is a great resource of Japanese uh, tournament results and deck lists. JustinBasil.com is a new up-and-coming Pokemon source uh, with news and set lists and even some deck lists and strategy guides. Zapdos TCG is a YouTube channel that I'm sure you all know of because Zapdos TCG is great. And then Talonite X is a Twitter account that uh, posts and translates a lot of Japanese deck lists. So I got a lot of deck lists from these sources, so be sure to check them all out. We're starting off with Blastoise VMAX. Now this one is kind of uh, an exception because it's not technically in Battle Styles, but it's coming out along Battle Styles in its own Blastoise VMAX battle box, just like the Venusaur battle box, which we'll get to at the end of the video. I just wanted to prefer, uh, pre preface it with this, that it's not actually in the set, but it's coming out as a supplementary product alongside Battle Styles. So Blastoise VMAX, a Water-type VMAX Pokemon with 330 HP. This is Blastoise's Gigantamax form in card form, and it has two attacks. The first one is Grand Falls for Water, Water, Water. It does 120. Search your deck for three water energies and attach them to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. So it's kind of like full blitz. Um, a little weaker in the damage output, but you can also spread out the energy however you like. So a little bit of a buff, a little bit of a nerf from full blitz. And then the second attack of G-Max Bombard uh, for four water energy does 220 and then 30 damage to two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Uh, so I'm not sure if this is actually better than Galarian Darmanitan of Emax, although this is weak to water, whereas Galarian Darman I'm sorry, this is weak to lightning, whereas Galarian Darmanitan is weak to metal. Uh, so that could come up as being a difference between would you play Blastoise or Galarian Darmanitan, depending on which type is more prevalent in the metagame at the time. Um, I think this card is pretty decent. It's not complete bulk, but it also doesn't scream... Uh, you know, viability. It doesn't look like it's anything crazy, but let's take a look at a deck list real quick. Uh, this is a list from Japan, as all of these lists, or most of these lists, are going to be Japanese deck lists. 
Um, so this deck list has a 3-3 line of Blastoise VMAX as well as the 2-1 line of Ditto VMAX. Uh, the Ditto V can just switch out for a Blastoise if needed, but it also allows you to evolve up into Ditto VMAX and have an attacker that has a different weakness. So Ditto VMAX weaks to fighting, uh, whereas Blastoise is weak to lightning. So if you're playing against a lightning deck, maybe you try to attack with Ditto VMAX as opposed to Blastoise until you take care of the attackers you need to. Notably, this deck is using a Rose engine to accelerate the energy, and Rose gets kind of a buff in battle styles because of the new Cricket Tune that allows you to draw cards, and it's a basic Pokemon. So previously, players were trying to pair Rose with Silvalli GX to let you draw up to five cards, but Silvalli GX needs to evolve. Uh, so this might uh, breathe some new life into Rose engines for energy acceleration so um, i was definitely expecting to see blastoise with frost moth for water energy acceleration but this is pretty cool seeing it with the rose and cricketoon v oh and also uh, i've given this low potential i don't think it's anything crazy uh but it could be solid you know it's solid enough to be on this list it's solid enough to actually be a functioning deck uh we'll just have to see if this finds its niche in the metagame um, until Pika Rom rotates, I don't think it will because the water weakness is a big deal. I'm sorry, the lightning weakness. I keep saying water. The lightning weakness is a big deal, and Pika Rom is a force to be reckoned with. Next, we're going to talk about Bronzong variants. So, Bronzong is a new card from Battle Styles. It's a stage one, 110 HP metal type Pokemon. Uh, it has the bronze, the bronzor that can evolve on turn one, which is still in format. So that's something to note. Uh, Bronzong has the ability metal transfer. As often as you like during your turn, you may move a metal energy from one of your Pokemon to another of your Pokemon. So we've seen these energy trans abilities uh, several times throughout the game's history, and a lot of them do get play. They're typically very good when you have a healing option in the format, something like Max Potion or Cheryl, which we are getting in battle style. So Cheryl is also an important part of Bronzong's viability. Cheryl is a new supporter that reads heal all damage from each of your evolution Pokemon. If you do, discard all energy from the Pokemon that were healed in this way. Uh, so you can move the energy off the Pokemon, play Cheryl, heal it, and not have to discard energy, then move the energy back to the Pokemon. A metal transfer can move basic metal, coating metal, and also Aurora energy. And you will see that throughout the variants that we're looking at here with Bronzong. So the first variant we'll look at is Corviknight VMAX Bronzong. So you might have noticed I didn't have Corviknight VMAX on the list uh, as its own archetype because it is uh, kind of mixed in, in the Bronzong variants here. Uh, but so this deck has the main attacker of Corviknight VMAX, 320 HP, the ability Lustrous Body, prevent all effects of your opponent's abilities done to this Pokemon. So notably, Zigzagoon cannot headbutt Tantrum the Corviknight, and Giratina cannot remove its special energy. Uh, G-Max Hurricane for Metal Metal Colorless does 240, and during your next turn, this Pokemon can't use this attack. But this does have free retreat, which is pretty nice on a big chunky metal Pokemon that's doing a lot of damage. Free retreat is awesome uh, because you can just retreat and then either switch or escape rope back out. Uh, move the energy off Cheryl to heal it. And this thing can just withstand everything you throw at it. Um, it's backed up by Zacian, of course, because Intrepid Sword is a great ability. And I definitely think some of these lists will play Zamazenta and or Luka Metal Tag Team as well. Um, and you'll see here they do have some Coating metal, metal Energy in the deck because Bronzong can move that as well as Basic Metal. Next, we've got Togekiss VMAX with Bronzong. Also, I forgot uh, to mention the Corviknight VMAX I have uh, marked as high potential. I do think it has... Uh, a lot of potential to be super viable in the battle style standard format. So I do expect that deck to be tier one, tier two. Uh, so next is Togekiss VMAX with Bronzong. Uh, this list here on screen is the only one I saw for the archetype. And I think it's really spread out too thin. Um, I, I don't think you can make the deck work consistently the way this list is built, which I definitely think would hinder it. Um, but what they're going for here kind of shows all the possible options you have at your disposal when you're playing a card like Bronzong because it can move Aurora energy. 
Uh, so paired with Togekiss VMAX, Togekiss is 310 HP, colorless, weak to lightning, which is off the bat not great in this current standard format. Uh, it has Max Glide for colorless, colorless 120. You may search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand. So uh, I, I've marked this one as mid potential because I think uh, Bronzong moving energy around to your tech attackers healing toga kiss with cheryl getting getting the cheryl on your tech attacker for next turn and then if you're not marnie to reset stamped uh you just have whatever exactly you need for that situation because of max glide i do think it's susceptible to a lot of things and i think it's going to be very weak to pikaram obviously and to decks playing multiple marnies and multiple stamps uh, but I do think it has potential because of the power that Bronzong gives you to have this flexible toolbox type deck. But I think this list is just not built with consistency in mind, and that's an issue for the deck. Uh, but I think this variant has potential. So I don't want to say it's low potential, but I definitely don't think it's high either. So something that I'm interested to see people work with, but it's not a top prospect of mine. Next, we've got Bronzong Mew 3. So another box type deck, but this time we don't have an evolving VMAX. We just have tag teams and Vs uh, alongside Bronzong, of course, with the four Aurora energy and a handful of metal energy. Zacian going to be the main attacker here alongside Mew 3. Zacian is just uh, included one more copy of Zacian over Mew 3 because, you know, you want to use Intrepid Sword for consistency purposes. But you've got a handful of tech attackers in there that could be switched out depending on the metagame that you're preparing for. Uh, because Bronzong can move the Aurora energies however you like. So you can full metal wall or you can alter creation. And then when you're done with that tag team, just move all of your energy to the attacker as long as that Pokemon lived. For that purpose, the survivability of the Pokemon that you use that first GX attack with, I think I'd like to see big charms in it for ADP and Luke Metal just to survive uh, after that, because you want to hold on to those energies on it, then move it off with Bronzong. Other than that, this list does look like it was built towards consistency as opposed to the Togekiss one. I think this variant also has mid potential, but when we have so many different variants of these Bronzong decks, I don't think they will all survive. They'll all be experimented with, and then some will make it and some won't. So that's why you're going to see me saying a lot of these Bronzong variants have mid potential, because we don't know which ones are good yet the set isn't even out yet but they all do have perks and they all do look playable so next we have bronzong adp z so that last one we did see both adp and zashin in it this is another bronzong box uh, but it's definitely more focused on adp you've got two adp and zash and two zashins and you don't have other gx attack options like you did in the other deck where you had the luke metal and the mew 3 and the other gx pokemon so this one is focused on being an adpz deck with the bronzong toolbox factor as a backup so this is really interesting to me because you have Empoleon that can swing for uh, 160 after Alter Creation. So with Water Weakness, that one shots a Senta Scorch. You have Nine Tails to hit things for Fire Weakness, Vika Volt to help against single prize decks, and Ditto V to just switch out when you need other V Pokemon. Uh, so this one's super, super interesting to me. Um, it also plays the one-off uh, Amazing Rare Zacian that swings for 300 damage, I believe, if the defending Pokemon's a VMAX. So with Alter Creation, that swings for 330. So that could be quite impressive as well. Um, so this one I also think has mid potential. Like I was saying, the Bronzong variants, they just really catch my eye. They're one of the more interesting things we have coming to standard format right now. And all those, these, uh, these basic only variants don't utilize Cheryl. They utilize the, uh, versatility that the deck can have because you get to move around these Aurora energies, which is a main component of these variants. And next we have Bronzong Zashin V box. So... As opposed to the other metal-focused deck that we looked at, this one does not feature Corviknight VMAX. Uh, so this one is focusing on Zacian V as being the main attacker with the toughness capes and the bird keepers and the switches. So you have all these switching outs for Zacian because it needs to switch. You have toughness cape for survivability. Uh, you have all these techs as well. There's Luke Metal, uh, Rhyperior, uh, I believe Indeedee, 
uh, Milotic, Ninetales V, Eternatus V, and Vika Volt. So Eternatus V can actually be a pretty decent um, attacker because you can use um, Power Accelerator to swing 30 and attach a basic energy. Um, or it's second attack to hit Dark Weakness as well. Uh, so that's actually a pretty clever include there into this deck. I never thought I'd see Eternatus V included as a uh, tech attacker. Uh, but this one, as you can see, all of these Bronzong decks, are, or most of them are focusing on their versatility or Cheryl being used. So the Togekiss one was trying to focus on both being versatile and using Cheryl, and I think that's where I get that idea of it being clunky from, but I think the ones that will really succeed are the ones that focus on one or the other strategy and not both, like we see with the Zacian box and the Mew box, and then the Corviknight box focuses on just having one tanky Pokemon. So I do think Bronzong can be successful in both ways, possibly not both of them at the same time, uh, but I slapped a mid potential on this Bron Bronzong's Zashin V box as well. Next, we've got Cherum variants. Cherum is a stage one Pokemon from Battle Styles with the ability Spring Bloom. As often as you like during your turn, you may attach a grass energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon that does not have a roll box. Um, if you want to hear more about Cherum, I did a whole card spotlight video on the channel for Cherum and talked about a lot of possibilities that this could go with and the card's potential as a whole. Uh, but let's look at some variants of Cherum from Battle Styles. So this list is from Justin Basil. Dot com so definitely check that out like i said a little bit of a newer resource on the scene but very useful and they're doing uh these deck lists with strategies and card images and whatnot so uh shouts out there for this deck list for cherim tapu bulu so tapu bulu is another card coming out of battle styles that goes well with cherim because it's a non rule box pokemon that wants grass energy the second attack, Nature's Judgment, is the focus for Grass Grass Colorless. It does 80 plus 80 more damage if you discard all energy, so that does 160. 160 is two-shotting a lot of things. The problem is Malolana and Cheryl are both in format, so that could just heal off one of those hits. And then you have to get back those energy and power up another Tapu Bulu just to try to replace that damage. So, in a vacuum, do I think this could work? Yes, it's a single prize-based deck hitting for two shots on three prize Pokemon. On paper, that sounds great. In practice, I think there's going to be healing and consistency issues and reset stamp and Marnies and things like that that might help not really uh, help you towards your strategy. They're going to hinder the strategy of Cherim Tapu Bulu and the inconsistencies of single prize decks because they have to set up a new attacker after every knockout whereas VMAX Pokemon they only get knocked out once in the game and if they got knocked out twice the game's over they don't need to set up a lot more Pokemon so that's kind of the inconsistencies of these decks I think if Nature's Judgment did like 180 uh, we'd be saying it has a little more potential. I might even be ranking this as mid potential because 180 would allow you to two shot Eternatus. Um, it would allow you to hit some more other basic Pokemon like Orcorio GX, uh, Crobat V, Eldegoss V, Krikatoon, things like that for a one shot. Um, so I think 160 is more than reasonable on a single price Pokemon, but the problem is the HP and the expectancy of the rest of the format isn't quite reasonable. Um, so I have marked this as low potential, but I still do think it's an, an actual deck. Um, we might see something out of it, but I don't think it's going to be great as of now. The next Cherim variant is Cherim Maractus. Um, and I think this one's going to kind of just be a meme deck because the damage output uh, on average is never really going to be more efficient than Baby Blounds. And we still have Baby Blounds until the probable rotation coming up later this year. But Maractus has the attack Powerful Needles for Grass Colorless. It does 60 damage times. So you flip a coin for each energy attached to Maractus and it does 60 damage for each, each head. Uh, so let's say you attach 10 basic grass energy to Maractus and you get an average of five heads out of that. You would do 300 damage. Um, that sounds pretty good, but compared to Baby Blounds, where you can guarantee your damage with Blacephalon from Unbroken Bonds, it sounds pretty bad. Now, of course, you could high roll. You could attach six energy and flip six heads and do 360, but you don't really want to base your game plan around that. 
around that coin flip of course there is the stadium that allows you to reflip coins but that still doesn't make them instant heads or guaranteed uh at least a damage floor because you could also uh roll all tails just as easy as all heads so uh this seems just more of like a fun meme youtube stream it kind of deck uh, so I have it as low potential, but it is something that people are talking about, so I felt that it was worth putting in this video. Next, we've got Durant. So Durant's kind of a spiritual reprint of an older, I believe, metal-type Durant. Uh, Durant is grass-type basic with the attack Devour for two colorless energy, notably can be used with a twin energy. Each of your Durant in play, discard the top card of your opponent's deck. So if you have four Durant in play, you'll be discarding the top four cards of your opponent's deck. If you have three, you'll discard three, etc. Uh, this is probably going to be paired with things like Lily's Polka Doll to just stall the game, and also with Shuckle, which has Deck Distiller. Flip a coin until you get Tails for each heads, discard the top card of your opponent's deck. So you could get lucky with Deck Distiller and get even more value than Durant's Devour gets. Um, or you can use the coin flip stadium to reflip your uh, first coin for deck distiller if you get tails right off the bat the next time. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the list. So this is a list from Japan for Durant. Um, it's kind of built to be the best that mill can be right now. The milling uh archetypes in standard format right now milling meaning discarding your opponent's deck and trying to win by deck out have been really strongly nerfed because when baloba and bryson man got banned earlier this year or earlier this season um the mill archetypes were really nerfed and are pretty much non-existent in standard format because baloba and bryson man was an important supporter card that dis discarded the top three cards of each opponent's or each player's deck uh, and without that, there's not a lot of mill power in standard. So Durant is the newest and possibly most viable mill power that's in standard, being paired with the shovel, with shuckle, uh, with Lily's polka doll, with some stall tactics like the new fan and Team Yelgrunt and Crushing Hammer. But still, I don't think this deck can really succeed consistently or at a high level, so I have marked it as low potential. I'd love to be proven wrong, but I just don't think Mill can do enough fast enough right now with how the games go. Next, we've got Galarian Mr. Rhyme uh, with Yamper. Uh, so Galarian Mr. Rhyme is a new stage one from Battle Styles with the attack ball juggling for colorless colorless or for twin energy or for triple acceleration energy it does 10 damage plus discard any number of item cards that have the word ball in their name from your hand so quick ball great ball level ball this attack does 40 more damage for each card you discard it in this way so if you discard five item cards with ball in the name from your hand you'll do 210 damage with this attack Yamper comes in because it has the ability Ball Search. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may put a Pokeball card, a Great Ball card, or one of each from your discard pile into your hand. So if you play down two Yampers, you get four balls back from your discard pile, discard them, and do 210 with Galarian and Mr. Rhyme. Next turn, you scoop up that two Yampers and rinse repeat. Uh, we have an example deck list here from Justin Basil's website again, so shouts out to them. I think this deck, again, kind of like Maractus, is going to be a meme deck um, where it'll be exciting if you can get wins against meta decks with it, but it seems like there's too many pieces needed. Now, I would like to say that this is the kind of deck that were this five, six years ago. This actually seems like kind of overpowered for being on single price Pokemon and only needing a single energy attachment and having the support of Yamper and Ball Guy and multiple ball type cards in the format. Uh, but standard format has gotten really power crept, so you have to look at these single prize decks objectively. Because, like I said about the Cherim decks, these single prize decks have to set up new attackers, attach new energies, redo the combo every turn. Whereas the big Pokemon just get to set up one card that doesn't have to evolve sometimes, attach the energy to that one card, and swing through multiple Pokemon with it while setting up the next one on their bench. So the inconsistencies and the disadvantages of single prize Pokemon are really kind of showing when we're looking at these lower tier uh, 
possible decks from battle styles, which is why I'm giving this one low potential. Next, we have Kingdra, another single prize deck and another single prize card from Battle Styles. Kingdra is a stage two water type Pokemon card with the ability Deep Sea King. When your active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, you may move any amount of water energy from that Pokemon to this Pokemon. And then it has the attack Aqua Burst that does 40 for each water energy attached. So for five energy, you do 200. For six energy, you do 240, etc. What's really nice about this card is that you can pile up six energy to the Kingdra with Frostmoth, attack for 240, it's knocked out, then all that energy goes back to the next Kingdra, then you pile up maybe three more energy on that Kingdra, and now you're swinging for, uh, what did I say last time, six for 240, now it's nine for uh, 360, then you get that knocked out and it goes to the next Kingdra, then you swing for 300, so or whatever it is. So you just keep piling up energy and it stays on the board the whole time is the goal. Will that actually happen in practice? Probably not because it's a stage two and your opponent's going to be knocking it out every single turn because unfortunately 150 HP is not very impressive. What I will say is I think this is an incredibly unique design of a card and something that really should be viable if the rest of the game was different. Um, so I think it's really cool. It's awesome to see a stage two Pokemon with a unique ability that we hadn't really seen before with an attack like that paired with it. Uh, but we'll look at a deck list. I have rated it low potential because I don't think it will be good enough. Um, I also want to note, I think this list should have a Mew bench barrier in it. Uh, up until rotation while we still have Mew just to protect against multiple Kingdras being knocked out at the same time. Um, but I think this list kind of looks like you would expect it to. It's just based on let's get our Kingdras out as much as as fast as possible, get them back with Ordinary Rod and Nessa, attach a bunch of energy with Frostmoth and keep the energy in play. That's kind of the goal here. Rosa to get uh, Kingdra candy energy after the next one's knocked out, maybe even add some more Rosas to this deck. I think it, it's the kind of deck that could function, but like one turn where you slip up and you don't get what you needed, it feels like the whole thing would probably fall apart. Or if your opponent like knocks out your Snom and you only had one and now next turn you just have a Kingdra with two energy on it and that's not very impressive. So um, evolution decks just have an inherent disadvantage compared to the other things happening in standard, which is why a lot of these decks are getting the low potential rating. Next, we've got Primeape with a list from Justin Basil's website. Again, um, just want to make sure I'm giving credit there where credit's due, and I want people to check out uh, new resources. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below, by the way, to all the uh, sources that I cited in the beginning of the video. So here we're looking at Primeape, which is a single strike Pokemon, and the attack Steam and Mad Strike for two fighting energy does 50 times and that times is this attack does 50 damage for each of your benched Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. So you have a full bench of five, and all of those Pokemon have damage on them. Even Mad Strike would do 250. Let's say you had two single strike energies attached to Primeape, that's going to do 340. I'm sorry, uh, 290. I'm not sure where 340 came from. I think I was thinking of Eternus V Max's HP because I'm just constantly, when we're looking at new cards, thinking, hmm, I'm going to never one shot Eternus. Uh, but this hits Eternus for weakness, actually, which is very nice. Uh, so, yeah, Steven Match Strike, full bench of Pokemon with damage. It'll do two. Uh, 250 with two single strike energy it would do 290 with a single strike and a basic fighting energy and martial arts dojo out it would do 310 and then you could also like throw zigzagoons and scoop up nets into your deck or maybe vitality band or something like that if you wanted to reach higher numbers um this list that we have here on the screen is paired with don fan and jinx to move energy to move damage and get damage onto your board but i've also seen lists and uh, seen talk about using Houndoom with single strike energy because when you attach with single strike roar the ability to search out single strike energy from your deck to put it on a single strike Pokemon it also puts two damage counters on that Pokemon so that could be a way of accelerating energy and getting damage onto the board um, so I think this has some potential I've rated it mid potential um, I think it's a step above the other non rule box decks that we're looking at today and I also think being fighting type and having access to single strike support gives it a little extra boost um, 
that the other uh, single prize Pokemon that we're looking at today don't really have. So I'm going to call Primeape mid potential. Um, I, I, I say like mid low, but you know what? I'm just going to give it the chance. We'll say it's mid potential. Um, probably a rogue deck, if anything, but the fighting type that it has, meaning that it hits important Pokemon like Pika, Ram, and Eternatus for weakness, and it also has single strike energy and Houndoom and other single strike support on its side. Uh, it lets me give it the benefit of the doubt that it can hold its own a little bit. Next, we've got Salazzle Weepin Bell, and this archetype basically makes itself. So Salazzle has the derisive roasting attack for colorless, colorless. It does 90 damage times. This attack does 90 damage for each special condition affecting your opponent's active Pokemon. Then we've got Weepin Bell with the ability Dangerous Mucus. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may make your opponent's active Pokemon burnt and poisoned. So that's two special conditions. Then you play Yellhorn for Confusion, which is a third special condition. And that means Derisive Roasting swings for 270 plus 10 from Poison plus 20 from Burn for a total of 300. Uh, from that attack for just a single energy with twin or triple excel on a single prize pokemon so that all sounds good and dandy but just like i've been talking about today you have to set up new attackers because the single prize attackers get knocked out then you have to redo your combo all over again and if you're trying to two shot bigger v maxes uh, they could Cheryl, they could Mallow Lana, they can, you know, just switch out to a new one. Then next turn you need the combo plus a gust effect to clean up that kill. Um, so there's just so many things to get in the way of single prize Pokemon working. Um, but I do think, like I said, these cards are all featured in this video because they can at least function and form a coherent deck. Um, so that's why it's here. I think it's low potential, but I do think it is a deck at the end of the day. Uh, just probably not going to be a high performing deck because of its inherent inconsistencies of being an evolving deck and a single prize deck. Uh, but it does have a pretty impressive output for being a single prize stage one that can use the attack for just one energy. Next, we've got Tapu Koko VMAX variants. So both Tapu Koko V and Tapu Koko VMAX have caught my eye. Tapu Koko V more so for being in a Pikaram deck as a Pikaram mirror tech. So Tapu Koko V, 210 HP lightning type, and it has the Spiral Thunder attack, which is very similar to the Tapu Koko GX attack from the Sun and Moon days. So Spiral Thunder costs Lightning Lightning Colorless and does 20 plus. This attack does 40 more damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So let's imagine for a moment here, it's not very rare for a Picarom on turn two to swing full blitz with three energy on the active and attach three more energy to the bench for a total of six energy on your opponent's board. That means Spiral Thunder would swing for 260 damage for three energy, not using your GX attack, not having a ton of energy on the board with Bolt Ton. You just have three energy on Tapu Koko V and swing and one shot your opponent's Picarom. So I think that's pretty pretty impressive and uh, a play uh, a card that allows some counterplay within the pika rom mirror so i think we might see that card teched into pika rom for the mirror match and any other deck that might load up a board with energy we'll have to see but it at least catches my eye as being something that has potential on its own we have Tapu Koko VMAX, however, which can have whole decks built around it so Tapu Koko VMAX 320 hp lightning type and it has one attack which is max shock for Lightning Lightning Colorless, it does 180 damage, and if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, their active Pokemon is now paralyzed. So let's see how some of these decks are going to work with Tapu Koko VMAX. The first is Tapu Koko VMAX with Electrode from Vivid Voltage coming from Justin Basil. So Electrode knocks itself out to search the deck for two Lightning Energy and attach them to a Lightning Pokemon. So you make your opponent take a prize card. You set up Tapu Koko VMAX. You either Marnie or reset stamp them down to a lower hand since you just made them take a prize card. And then you Max Shock Paralyze them. Now, if you pop two electrodes within a game and only set up Tapu Koko V Maxes, that means your opponent would have to knock out a Tapu Koko V Max, take the two prize cards from the two electrodes that popped, 
and then have another Tapu Koko VMAX that you try to force them to get through, which means you would try not to play other support Pokemon onto the board. Um, and you'll see in this list, they've included only one Crobat, one Dedenne, one Zapdos as a non-GX, non-V attacker, and then the Tapu Koko Prism, which you just send to the Lost Zone and uh, attach your energy to your Tapu Koko VMAX with. Um, so I think it's a viable strategy to pop two electrodes and make your opponent try to go through two Tapu Koko VMAXs. Um, there is a lot of consistency in the format that helps opponents get out of Marnies and reset stamps, which is why you might hear people say that reset stamps don't always work very well because you have Crobats, you have the Dene's, you have Quick Balls, Pokecoms, Great Balls, Cherish Ball for the Dene, uh, Electromagnetic Radar for the Dene research poke gear you know uh eldegoss for a supporter to draw you out of a low hand so there are a lot of things to help you get out of these reset stamp and marnie positions but the goal is that you can max shock them after messing up their hand and keep them active with the paralyze and then next turn knock out that two or three prize pokemon whether it be a gx or v or v max pokemon with max shock um so yeah, I've given this mid potential. I, I do think it has some potential. We'll see where it goes. Um, fighting weakness. There are things that try to just capitalize on decks being weak to fighting, like Don Fan, like the Primeape deck we looked at. The new Urshifus uh, that we'll be getting to in just a second here are fighting types. So that could definitely pose to be a threat for the Tapu Koko VMAX decks. Next, we have Tabu Koko VMAX Omastar. This list is from Zapdos TCG. Definitely check out his YouTube channel if you've never been over there before. Uh, this one's pretty cool. It's paired with Omastar, which we have seen decks paired with Omastar before and just trying to have a board of one big attacker and Omastar on the bench. This is also using Electrode to pop energy onto Coco, make your opponent take a prize card, then reset stamp your opponent down to a low hand. Omastar being the main partner here has the ability Fossil Bind. As long as you have fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent, they can't play any item cards from their hand. So that means if you paralyze them in the active, they can't switch and they can't rotate. Uh, they can't re escape rope out of it. Uh, so their options would be Bird Keeper and Malolana if you have fewer Pokemon in play and they can't play item cards. So that's kind of the goal here. I do think this is a little harder to get set up since you're trying to set up a fossil Pokemon with the research lab. So you want to do that turn one. Uh, so I gave this lower potential, but again, I think it's a cohesive strategy. I think it's a deck that functions. I'm just not sure how consistent and how powerful it will be on a consistent basis. And for the last Tapu Koko VMAX variant, we've got Tapu Koko VMAX Pikaram. So this list pretty much looks like a typical Pikaram list. Uh, and then you've got the 2-2 two -two Tapu Koko VMAX thrown in there. Um, so I will say I have not tested this at all. I don't know if this is better or worse than playing a regular Pikaram deck. That's something we'll just have to see. Um, I really don't have a good read on the potential of this one, so I actually haven't marked this one as low, mid, or high potential, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. Um, on one hand, I'd say we're putting in extra cards that aren't consistency for Pika Rum, and Pika Rum works fine on its own, so let's not put in Tapu Koko VMAX. But on the other hand, we have a Pokemon with 60 HP more than Raichu, uh, the attack does more damage, and you don't have to switch into for the paralyze effect. Um, so I can see pros and cons to it, but like I said, uh, let me know your thoughts on this Pikaram archetype with the 2-2 uh, Tapu Koko VMAX line uh, paired with it. Next, we've got Single Strike Urshifu VMAX. Um, so we're covering Single Strike Urshifu VMAX first, and this one is definitely a lot less versatile than the Rapid Strike Urshifu, and Single Strike Urshifu VMAX, I think the deck kind of makes itself based on the cards that they've printed with it. So Single Strike Urshifu VMAX, 330 HP fighting type VMAX Pokemon evolves from Urshifu V. Um, it has the beatdown attack, colorless, 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 to do 100. Note that the single strike energies make your Pokemon do 20 more damage. So if you have three single strike energies on this Pokemon, beatdown would do 160. G-Max One Blow is the main attack for fighting, 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 colorless. It does 270. Discard all energy attached to this Pokemon, and the attack's damage goes through all effects. 
Um, and if you have two single strike energies, this does 310, three single strike energies, 330, etc. Houndoom powers it up and gets the single strike energies on it. And then single strike scroll of scorn. Um, this is really the big deal on why I think single strike Urshifu V Max uh, can be a pretty good deck. Because you attach this and single strike Urshifu gets an extra attack it can use, which is Furious Anger. For fighting, uh, it does 10 damage plus 10 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So you dump all of your energy off to do 270 damage to the opponent or plus with the single strike energies. All of your energy is gone. Your opponent either has to one shot you or hit you for a chunk of damage. And then if you got hit for a chunk of damage, you can attach single scroll of scorn and use furious anger for just a single energy, maybe boosted by a single strike energy. So it's a base of 30 plus 10 for every damage counter. And you do a good, a good amount of damage while setting up another single strike or Shifu VMAX on the bench. So this list is pretty much doing exactly what I just mentioned. The single strike scroll is in there. You just can't see it because of the glare, uh, but it's featuring the Houndoom line, the Urshifu VMAX, single strike energy, the scroll of scorn, the uh, pot of vitality, I believe that shuffles the single strike energy back into your deck. And also the new single strike stadium that allows you to discard a single strike card and draw two. Uh, so I do think this has high potential. It's definitely a lot more straightforward. And like I said, the deck kind of builds itself compared to Rapid Strike Urshifu. But I do think this deck has high potential. And of course, we are going to get into the one you've been waiting for. Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. So I do want to preface this by saying that Omnipoke put out a massive video on Rapid Strike Urshifu vmax variants um it's called the many ways to play rapid strike urshifu vmax i think joe has just locked himself up and has been making rapid strike urshifu lists for about two weeks now so go watch that video so you can see all of joe's uh beautiful urshifu vmax lists and just listen to him talking about it because it's great to hear the passion that is coming back to players because of rapid strike urshifu vmax and its versatility so, uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX 330 HP fighting, just like its counterpart, except this one has the Rapid Strike tag, and it has two attacks. The first one, Gale Thrust for fighting, does 30 damage, and if this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active, it does 120 more, so that's 150 for one energy. Pretty good on a fighting type. That's doing 300 to Pikaram, Raichu, Coco VMAX, Eternatus, all of the above. And then the main attack, G-Max Rapid Flow for Fighting Fighting Colorless. Discard all energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. That's really good. You can bring up a Crobat or a Dedenne, do 120 to the active for a knockout because of type weakness, and then 120 to a bench Pokemon. Um, but let's talk about the support it gets. Rapid Strike has really great support. Um, so starting with the Rapid Strike Energy... It counts as two energy, a combination of water and fighting, and it can only be attached to a Rapid Strike Pokemon. Really awesome energy card. Uh, probably one of the best cards in the set alongside Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. Empoleon V has 210 HP. It does 130 for three energy and then moves an energy back to one of your benched Pokemon. And Octillery, once a turn, can search your deck for any Rapid Strike card. So... That's pretty versatile. It could be Rapid Strike Energy. It could be Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. It could be one of the new great supporter cards or trainer cards that we're getting that are Rapid Strike. We've got Karina's Motivation coming out, which is a supporter that allows you to draw up to six. So that could stamp proof you with Octillery. We also have the new Billowing Fan item card, which is like Enhanced Hammer, but instead of discarding it, it puts the card at the bottom of your opponent's deck. Uh, so let's look at some deck lists. I have a lot here, but like I said, if you want a more extensive review of Urshifu Rapid Strike form, uh, definitely go check out Omnipoke's video on that. So this is going to be kind of the cookie cutter Rapid Strike Urshifu deck, kind of like Single Strike Urshifu has that straightforward builds itself deck. This is that version, but for Rapid Strike Urshifu. Um... So you got your line of Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, the Empoleon, the Octillery. All of these decks are going to be playing for Rapid Strike Energy because the card is busted. The scroll for Rapid Strike is Fighting Colorless Colorless, and it does 30 to all of your opponent's Pokemon. Notably, if this is attached to Empoleon, it even swings through Mew Bench Barrier because Empoleon's ability reads uh, that your opponent's non-rulebox basic Pokemon have no abilities. 
This uh, deck is also featuring Cheryl to heal your Urshifu, uh, and it's also featuring Karate Belt. So if your opponent goes ahead on prize cards, you just need Karate Belt plus Rapid Strike Energy to attack with uh, GMAX Rapid Flow. Next, we've got Rapid Strike Urshifu Dragapult VMAX, and I promise that it gets wilder than this. Uh, this is pretty tame as far as the Urshifu variants go. Um, I also think this one has high potential. If I didn't mention it, the last one has high potential too. Um, yeah, straight Rapid Strike Urshifu is kind of a no-brainer on being a good deck. And I think this one has high potential as well, because Dragapult not only hits opposing Urshifus for weakness, it also resists them uh, because it resists fighting type. So this is kind of like a really great type coverage deck. Urshifu hits Pikaram and Eternatus for weakness, while Dragapult hits other Urshifus for weakness. It's really cool, actually. Um, and then, of course, you've got uh, Octillery searching out for your Karina for consistency, the Billowing Fan for disruption, the Rapid Strike Energy for you know consistency energy attachments to Urshifu. Um, notably, none of these lists involve the Celebi from Shining Legends or from Shining Fates. And I do think that's a pretty good card for fetching energy, but you probably don't need it if you're playing the Octillery. But I did mention that in my uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu deck profile a little while back. High potential for Urshifu Dragapult. Next, we have Urshifu or Beetle VMAX. I told you it gets crazier. Taking a sip of water. So here they went all out with four Cheryl. Um... I'm not sure if that really works for consistency purposes, but this deck looks really cool. You've got Orbital VMAX to spread damage with Eerie Beam as well as attack with GMAX Wave. Um, does a lot of damage if your opponent has a lot of energy on them, simple as that. And Eerie Beam can spread damage around. You can hide behind dolls, switch a bunch of times because you have switch and escape rope and bird keeper. Uh, Cheryl to heal an ore beetle if you just leave it out there to take damage. Cheryl to heal an Urshifu if you use rapid flow and discard all of your energy anyway. So this deck does have synergy. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not happy that we just have all these VMAX Pokemon being slammed together um, and just a party of three prizers. But boy, is it better than tag teams. And it's also better than just a turn to test swinging for 270 every turn and having no thought process. So uh, I think this deck has mid potential, this variant of Urshifu. I think it's probably a little more under, a little less overwhelming or more underwhelming. It's less whelming. Yes. Um, 50 minutes into the video and I start saying things like less whelming. Uh, but yeah, I think this has some potential. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be as good as straight Urshifu. I think Urshifu Dragapult's probably also a little bit better, but darn it if it's not a cool deck. So it's on the video. Uh, definitely hope y'all try this one out. Next, we've got Rapid Strike Urshifu with Welder. <laughs> like I said, you can throw this card with anything pretty much. Um, and, and if this video doesn't prove it, like I said, go watch Joe's Rapid Strike Urshifu video. It's a great watch. Um... So you want to be aggressive with this one, Welder to Empoleon, and then attach Rapid Strike Energy, swing for 130, turn 1, move the Rapid Strike Energy back to Urshifu, next turn attack with Urshifu. You've also got Mewtwo here to hit weakness on other Urshifus with the cards you could copy, like Flareon GX and Reshizard and Heatran GX, or just attack with those um, to hit for fire weakness. So you're hitting for four different weaknesses with this deck. You're hitting for weakness with Empoleon, Fighting Weakness with Urshi, Fire Weakness with the Fire Guys, and then Psychic Weakness with Mewtwo and Mew. Pretty awesome deck, but it does play Welder as its main draw support. Um, I believe those two cards that are backwards sleeves are most likely Professor's Researches. Um, I'm not really sure, though. Like I said, these most of these lists are from Japan, and this one happened to have... Um, two backward sleeves but do with those backward sleeves what you will have a little creativity with this one this one has mid potential i think it's probably one of the least consistent urshifu lists we'll look at but it has really great type coverage next is urshifu zashin um so i actually started making this video a few days ago and then i had seen joe's urshifu 
video, and I didn't expect him to include Urshifu's Zashin. I thought I was the only one that had found it. Uh, but Joe included Urshifu with Zashin V, and he said it really well, so I'll just quote him. He said, basically, we're just putting two of the best cards in the game together, and it's been done before, and it's worked before, and I completely agree with that. Uh, so you have Urshifu V Max Rapid Strike that has a crazy attack. You have Zashin V that's really consistent, accelerates energy, and has a great attack on a basic Pokemon. So the thought process here is you can hit things either first with Rapid Flow to set them up with knockouts for Brave Blade, or you hit them first with Brave Blade and then set them out, set them up for knockouts with Rapid Flow. The one thing here is uh, maybe play Scoop Up Nets, Zigzagoon, and like a Rusted Sword. So you can like actually get one shots with Zashin on some things. Uh, but then against VMAX decks, this is just like a buff to straight Zashin. Because against VMAX decks, you hit two of them with Zashin, and then you clean them both up at the same time with Urshifu. So uh, this is really awesome. Looks great. Not sure if it'll be the best one. I have it rated at mid potential, but y'all can prove me wrong on that. Um, looks great. It doesn't include Octillery for the support of Urshifu. Um, it doesn't cover, uh, type coverage against other Urshifu VMAX decks like the Mewtwo one and the Dragapult one does. And I think the main weakness is it's just going to be weak to things that play Cheryl and Malolana because you want to hit them with Zosh and then clean up with Urshifu and the Cheryl and Malolana decks can stop that. So... Maybe if Cheryl isn't being played a lot and Malolana is the worry, you can add the Mimic you that heal blocks. Um, and then I do believe a stadium got revealed for a set down the line that just stops healing, but that seems like a pretty inconsistent game plan because your opponent could just bump it. So yeah, I think the weakness of this deck is just your opponent healing. Um, but if healing isn't a big part of the meta, then this could actually be pretty good. Next we have Venusaur VMAX and... Don't you know I misspelled Venusaur on this slide? That's a treat. So Venusaur VMAX, uh, 330 HP grass type VMAX Pokemon. Also coming out in a battle box like Blastoise is. Uh, the first attack, Forest Storm for Colorless. Colorless does 30 damage times. This attack does 30 damage for each grass energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Um, so, you know, that could add up, but to one-shot other VMAXs, which... You know, we're always looking for one shots. Uh, for to one shot other V Maxes, you'd have to have like eleven grass energy on your board, which is a lot of energy. Uh, but you could look at it as Venusaur only needs two energy on itself, so you could Cheryl it every turn and then just reapply energy with Rillaboom. Uh, so I think that sounds pretty doable, but probably not the most viable strategy. Um, so here's a list for Venusaur with Egg Rail Tag Team and Rillaboom. I think this is probably low potential right now, uh, both due to Welder and also due to it being actually for three reasons. One, Welder, it's weak to fire. Two, there's a stage two to set up and a stage one, which is Venusaur VMAX. And three, even if you take Welder out of the equation, Victini VMAX. Uh, doesn't even need welder so even after rotation grass decks will be afraid of a very very strong uh fire pokemon so i think it's low potential could work and definitely definitely could work uh with that Cheryl strategy i mentioned and in a um in a metagame with very low counts of fire decks but fire seems like it's going to be decently strong for a little while and lastly, we have Victini VMAX, which I was just talking about. Look at that. So Victini VMAX, uh, 310 HP fire Pokemon. It has Spreading Flames, which is the same attack that Victini V from Sword and Shield has. Attach up to three fire energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. And then it also has Max Victory, which is the main attack for a fire and colorless. It does 100. If your opponent's active as a V, this includes VMAX as well. This attack does 220 damage. So 220 for two energy with no stipulations other than attacking into a V Pokemon, which is not very hard to do in today's atmosphere, is pretty darn good for Victini. 
Uh, obviously, it could be paired with other attackers that utilize Welder, but Victini itself doesn't need Welder since it only needs two energy to attack. And I thought Nine Tails with Nine Temptations could be a decent partner for it for bringing up specific things, uh, but maybe not. The list we're looking at today does not have Nine Tails in it, but I was thinking Nine Tails could be involved in the mix. Um, I think Victini VMAX has high potential. It does a ton of burst damage for just two energy, so you don't have to use Welder. But you could be using Welder to power up other attackers on the bench. So when Victini VMAX gets knocked out, you can just use ridiculous attacks like Flare Bullets for 300 or, um, you know, Heatran GX for even higher than 300. So I do think this one has a lot of potential. Fire has a good amount of support with Welder and Mewtwo and the GX Pokemon that it can copy that are strong. So at least for right now, I think it's very strong. And even after rotation, it doesn't need Welder. So I think it stays pretty strong. So those are all of the decks that I could find that are coming out of battle styles right down to even the different variants of archetypes so if i missed any let me know uh i didn't expect this video to be an hour long so shouts out to anybody still watching and if you have not subscribed to the channel yet please do for daily pokemon tcg content and also check out my stream over at twitch.tv slash celios network where i'll be playing with all of these decks when it comes out on ptcgo thanks for watching have a great day and i'll see you next time here on celios network